Good morning. Today I want to encourage you with a word. It's a bit of a caution, but also an encouragement. Being a prophetic person, you cannot be influenced by any religion in your thinking. Religion in our thinking. Now, we know religion, many people who are not um, in the kingdom, they're not saved, they see religion as a lifestyle, a, a, a set of rules that we have to behave according to. Um, we have to go to church, we have to give our money, we have to dress a certain way, we speak a certain way, and they say that is religion. And then other people who are not saved see religion as what denomination do you belong to? Are you a Christian or are you Hindu or Buddhist or whatever it may be? And so we know that religion is actually a set of laws that we put upon ourselves. It is a way of seeing God, seeing ourselves that is not in line with how we are meant to because we do not live according to religious laws and rules. We live according to relationship with the Father. Jesus reconciled us back into relationship with the Father by his death on the cross. So we do not live according to religious rules. You know, you can't do this on a Sunday. We used to know somebody who was born again, loved God, very sincere person, but she would not do anything on a Sunday. You know, in the Bible, it speaks about the Sabbath. You do nothing. She wouldn't do anything on a Sunday. She wouldn't cut hair. Um, I just, I remember that, that somebody asked if she would cut their hair and she said, I can't do it. It's on a Sunday. Um, and so that is living, putting yourself under a set of rules that just bring you into a place of limitation, restriction. When we realize that in Christ, we've been set free from the curse, we've been redeemed from the curse, set free from the law, we no longer live under the law because we can't measure up to the law. And so when we bring this religious way of thinking into our calling to be prophetic people, then we're going to filter everything through that religion. Then we will begin to, to, to the words we hear and the words we say on behalf of God will come out as judgmental, critical, there will be no encouragement, there will be no New Testament purpose of prophecy, edify, exhort, and comfort. There will be none of that. It will be telling people how they've missed the law, and we always miss the law. So, this is a, an encouragement to you today, but also a caution to you. A lot of people, when they hear that you, you are prophetic, they straight away, they, they think they have to behave around you because you can see every sin in their lives. That you can discern everything and you're just a supernatural being who just knows everything. You have a hotline to heaven. Everything God says, you just, you know. And everything you say, everything that comes out of your mouth is the voice of God to these people. That is putting someone on a pedestal, first of all. And if, if we allow that, um, then we're at fault. So we need to be real people. If we want to minister to people, we need to be real. We need to tell them that we don't always hear everything about their lives. We're just normal people living our lives here, but with a calling to focus on hearing what he's saying. That's everybody. We're designed to hear the voice of God. So if we're caught in a trap of religion, one of the things that um, will be very evident is how you minister to people. Religion and poverty in your thinking go hand in hand. So because religion and poverty are basically the same, they come from the same root. Um, poverty is have in your thinking is you can just get by. God will just give you enough to get by. He will bless you. He's good. Yes, but you'll always be living on the edge. And I'm not talking about material goods. I'm talking about the, the spiritual blessings we have in the heavenly places. Um, when you need wisdom from God, he gives generously without finding fault. That's what the book of James tells me. But religion will tell you that you have to behave a certain way. You have to do certain things to get God's attention. 
And when we become prophetic people who still carry this religious thinking, what's going to come out of our mouths is going to measure up to our poverty thinking. So if you have any kind of poverty thinking about who God is, about who you are in Christ, then we're actually undermining the work of the cross that Jesus did because we now have a spiritual inheritance in him. We are anointed and empowered. We are able to hear what God says and God is not someone who just skips and, and saves every little bit of his power so that he'll have enough for 10 years to come. So this is what religion will do. Um, first of all, relationship says, remember I said that if you have poverty thinking, it'll come, at, come out in how you minister to other people. So you will never, if, if you have poverty thinking, it's small mindedness. If you have that in your thinking and you're standing in front of somebody and you want to minister to them, there's no way you're going to say, God's going to send you to the nations. God's going to bless you and your family. He, there are some rewards coming for you. You will not, you will struggle to say, God wants to heal you now because you won't have the faith for that because you'll have small mindedness in your thinking. Why do you think it's so important to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so we can discern what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God? Romans 12, verse 2. Verse 2, yes. So instead, when we minister to people out of a relationship with the Father, we are going to have his heart for those people who are standing in front of us. Then we won't have a problem saying, I just see God blessing you out of your socks. Is coming such a blessing on you that you won't know what to do with it. Um, because that's how God sees his people. That's what God wants to say to his people. We won't just be imagining these things because now suddenly we just think God wants to do over the top things. That's what God wants to do. He wants to bless us. He wants us to be people who say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Not just on a Sunday because I went to church, because I did something right so God will give me a reward. God wants us to be people who are willing to prophesy his abundance of blessing over his people because he wants us to be people who have a word in our mouths that empower believers to do what they're called to do and to believe what they're asked to believe in these days. If we are going to believe that as the world gets darker, the glory of God is going to be seen upon his people. We have to get rid of religious thinking because we cannot do anything to deserve the glory of God. We just have to obey the leading of the Spirit of God. We have to walk in the favor of God and we put our faith in him and we co-labor with him here. And we become these people because um, we get to know the word of God. We get to know God in his word and then we get to know the God of the word. That he is a father who makes a promise and along with the promise he, he gives the faith that we will believe that that promise is going to come to pass. So if there's any small mindedness in your thinking, get rid of that today. Say, God, help me with my limitations in my thinking about who you are and what you can do. And that you're only going to give little prophecies to people to make them feel good for a while. You know the word blessing doesn't just mean Oh, bless you, my sister or my brother. You know, you know, if you call people sister and brother, that's fine. You know, bless you and feel better for a while. Continue in your suffering because God is with you. The word blessing is to empower people to rise up, to walk in the calling and the purpose that God has put in their lives. So be a prophetic person who has no religion in your thinking. A set of rules you have to stick to so God will reward you because you obeyed them. God rewards you anyway because you're in Christ. He rewards obedience, yes, he does. He rewards obedience when he says, go and say this, go and do that. He rewards us with his presence. And that's the greatest reward we can have. So be a, purpo uh, a purpose. Be a prophetic person who knows your purpose. And that's to deal with religion. We've had many times where we've gone into places and people have had this religious expectation that the prophets are in town and now they're going to point out our sin. And now they're going to speak in old King James language. There are people really believe that today. And here we come and we're just normal people trusting that God will work through us and break off the shackles of religion. To set people free, to see they've been broken out of that and restored to relationship with the Father. 
That's one of the purposes of prophetic ministry, to restore the hearts of God's people to his heart so that we can see who he really is, that he loves us, uh, that his, his plans for us are without measure, that he has a purpose for every single one of us, and he wants to speak to us. Isn't that exciting? So get rid of religion in your thinking and be encouraged with that today.